or welcome back to the run up well the president-elect bola tinubu has extended an olive branch to fellow contestants of the pdp atiku abubakar and peter Obi of the labor party and others to join him as a team in making nigeria a great nation tinubu made the call in his acceptance speech after he was declared winner of saturday's presidential election by the chairman of the Independent Electoral National Electoral Commission, Ainak Mahmoud Yakubu, Tinubu polled 8,794,726 votes and won in 12 states to beat Al Haji Atiku Abubaka of the PDP, who came second with 6,984,520 votes and also won in 12 states. The Labour Party candidate Peter Obi polled 6,101,533 votes to place a close third. He also won 11 states and the FCT. Former Governor of Kano State and New Nigeria People's Party, the NNPP candidate Senator Rabiu Kwankoso came fourth with 1,496,000 687 votes. Well, joining us to discuss the 2023 outcome of the presidential elections are our guests of Kabiru Sophie, a public affairs analyst. He teaches political science at the Kano State College of Education and Preliminary Studies. Hello. Thank you for having me on the program. All right. We also have Vincent Isian, a member of the APC Presidential Campaign Council. It's a professional forum. He is a lawyer and joins us from Akwaibom State. Hello, Vincent. Thank you for having me here on your program. It's a pleasure. Congratulations to Nigerians. It's a great day. Thank you very much. All right, Nyamgo, perhaps we should start with Vincent because <laughs> it's, it's their moment. Vincent, yeah. it's your moment. You're already basking in the excitement, and we mm. understand that. But tell us... Um, What's your assessment of how things played out on the 25th? Well, I'll say um, once again, Nigeria has chosen to ensure that the institution of democracy is sustained. It was a very tough campaign. Um, it went probably according to our projections, but it was a tough campaign. In spite of attempts by some, so attempts were made by some anti democratic elements. But the key thing is Nigerians have voted to sustain our democracy. And it's also, we feel good as an as APC that we've, Nigerians have decided to continue to entrust their mandates with us. We think we're the best party to sustain this um this show of democracy and to sustain and to improve on the positive foundations that have already been laid in our in our where we are running out our second term of course there are areas that we need to think in as we come as we run into the new administration and fortunately we have also selected in my view a candidate with global capacity and the capacity to deliver on the expectations of nigerians we thank all Nigerians for putting their trust in the APC. We commend the other parties, especially the PDP, the Labour Party, and even the NNPP, and even the other, uh, maybe the other 14 other parties. We indeed owe our victory as well to the other parties. In many ways, we don't need to say that. So we thank them and we ask them to continue to believe in the institution of democracy. That's uh, that's democracy in, in action. You don't win today, you probably win tomorrow. And uh, besides, everybody's a winner. There's still a role. Our like candidate has said that invited them to come and join in the process of building Nigeria, taking Nigeria to the level so that we can actually have a, a nation, a black African nation that the globe, the whole world is waiting for. And it has to be Nigeria. There can be no other country. And I'm confident that with Asura Jibola continue you will start to feel that expectation. Hmm. Uh, well, Kabiru, do you share the same sentiments with uh, Vincent? Uh, well, he gave us almost like another acceptance speech. He's basking <laughs> in the moment. I, I, I quite understand that. But uh, do you share the same sentiments? Do you think what went down and culminated in the announcement of the APC presidential candidate uh, is something worth applauding? 
Yes, I think um, I agree with him uh, right from the beginning where he mentioned the challenges uh, of his party, I mean, in the contest. Um, it was a very tough uh, battle for them, uh, especially uh, considering the fact that uh, many people were skeptical of the uh, the ticket even flying through, uh, the same Fed ticket. Uh, and some people wanted to play the religious card against the, 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 the ticket. And then secondly, of course, there were the infighting that we have seen within APC, um, the, the accusations from the uh, presidential candidate on sabotage within the party, especially is and what has you. Um, but despite that, uh, the, the, the party and uh, emerged victorious. So I think, yes, about the challenges he has uh, rightly mentioned. And of course, it was a very keen contest. Um, nobody thought uh, the Labour Party will beat uh, APC in, in, in Lagos, and that happened too. Uh, so it was really a very interesting uh, scenario on the elections. Uh, it makes the election more acceptable, despite the the rejection of the process by some party agents. And, and we must commend also the what's the announcement of the final results when they reached out to there is uh, something good yeah. from the acceptance speech of Ashwajibola Amatunu. Kabiru, you have to, you have to uh, look around you. Maybe there's something that is obstructing your audio at some point, at definite points. Uh, we're losing your audio and then it's coming back, it's maybe in a matter of seconds. So look around you, something that might be obstructing your audio. Yeah, right. okay. So, but uh, good thing we still have Vincent whose audio is clear. So Vincent, we cannot overlook the fact that these elections were seriously marred with controversies. And even the international community, the EU inclusive, have... Um, cast uh, as passions they've, 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 they've declared it uh, to be very short of expectations especially uh, of that of Nigerians how do you respond to that um, I, I'd like to say that um, the views of the international observers are still being collated um, they are not observer the election but what I'd say is that this election in my view, seems to be probably one of the most credible elections we have had. And I'll say this especially because of with the introduction, with the signing of the Electoral Act, which was done by our president, and that was an important innovation which brought about a few novel processes in the electoral process, especially the beavers. What we see for so sure that the Beavers has actually introduced a lot of credibility in terms of the overall uh, voter turnout. You see you that. You talk about credibility. <laughs> Sorry, I have to cut in here because you talk about credibility, uh, saying the Beavers has brought in credibility, but the Beavers, the inability or refusal of the INEC officials to use the beavers, which was the main reason why most Nigerians came out on the 25th of February to vote, is a major reason why this election is being questioned. And so for you to be ascribing victory to the beavers or credit to the beavers is getting me a little bit confused. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Because the most important thing, like I said, is that, first of all, the Nigerians came out to vote because of the renewed interest in electoral process. Nigerians are actually demanding for those in government to be more responsive to their needs. That's the first thing. And like the beaver actually had a primary function. It's actually a bi biometric voter accreditation system. The most important function of the beavers is voter accreditation. And that has shown true. You see, for instance, in my unit in Aquaibo, where we usually have a voter report of about 500 to 600, for the first time in this election, we had a voter report of about 250. That I totally give credit to, to Beavers. 
And that you could see that trend running all through Lagos, some of the states that just have two million voters. And, and that's that's a picture that people are not taking account of. Before the election, we actually asked for the report of collected voters' cards. And for instance, in Lagos, we have six million voters' cards. But the figures for people who actually voted is about 1.5. So what, where, where are the many 4.5 voters' cards that were collected? It's a figure, it's not something that we need to start to interrogate. And people are, are, people are ascribing a, a lot of pressure to another a secondary function of givers, which is the fact that you can use visas to scan results and send to the INX server. That's, that is a secondary function. It's not the primary function of the machine itself. And so that's why I say that, that machine has actually introduced a lot of credibility to the voter report from the units which are now collated and to this uh, world and local government and states. That is a big plus that I've seen that people are missing the point of. Because a lot of people are focusing, well, for, for whatever reasons, on the fact that um, they, they, want, they thought that the beavers would just, that's a secondary function of the beavers. And I think it succeeded. So I think that uh, we need to wait for the final report of the observers. Of course, there were incidents of um, violence and all that. Nobody's going to deny that. And nobody supports that. And definitely the law enforcement agencies should do what they need to do. I never also has a part to review the process, like everybody knows, under electoral act. And they're probably going to look at that. So anybody who has complaints, whatever parties, whatever institutions, whatever agents have parties, should go by the by the book and make whatever complaints they have. And I and I can look at it. And eventually, of course, we can still go back to our legal process. Which is, which is a very um, a, a institution that is, is well regarded and has shown capacity to ensure that okay. the will of the people is respected. I have no doubt okay. that anybody who goes yeah. by the cost of law, but I think that this election, in my view, and in, in, when everybody cools down and reviews it, this election has actually set a lot of marks that we should start to build upon. Okay, thank you, Estienne. Um, I would have loved to stay with you, but let me go to uh, Kabiru, hoping that his audio has improved now. Kabiru, are you there? Yeah, I'm here with you. Let me just take what Estienne has said. I, I didn't understand what he meant by secondary function, because uh, that's why I would have wanted to stay with him. But um, since you can also share your own perspective to this issue, let me just ask you. Beavers, we, uh, we were made to understand that it can do a lot of things. It, will, it can multitask, or not really. It has so many functions. It will aid us in the accreditation process, and it also will upload the results. He kept saying a secondary function, and I was thinking about my phone, like, okay, the phone is for making of calls. And then you're now telling me that because a text message is a secondary function, when I send a text message, I can now resort to say, okay, copy it out. <laughs> because that's what exactly happened in this thing. There was the ability by the beavers to upload results. But now they kept telling us that it has to go to the local government before it passes to the state and then to the National Collation Center. And we're asking ourselves why. And then they brought the manual one. So it's like sending a text message and someone on the other side copies it out before forwarding it to where it should go. It makes no sense to us. So what, are your, what is your own perspective to this discussion about beavers being, uh, having accreditation as a primary function and having the uploading of results? He said scanning and uploading. The uploading of results as a secondary function. Will you take that as a good enough excuse to say that the election was free and fair? Well, I think um, this explanation of uh, it being uh, primary or secondary um, may, may likely come from INEC. I expect it to come from INEC because INEC admitted the fact that uh, Beavers was used for accreditation and it was used to upload results, like you mentioned, yes. rightly mentioned, to local government and to state level. I think where everything fell is where there were, the result was not uploaded from the states to the National Coalition Center. And I think that was what was challenged by the agents of the political parties that uh, walked out of the National, uh, National Coalition Center. So uh, I, I think ideally what should have been done was the same way it was uploaded and sent to the local government, then electronically 
should be sent to the state and electronically it can be sent to the national coalition center even if something is going to be brought manually then at least let it be done simultaneously at the same time uh, and then when that failed um, the next thing to do is to see whether there are discrepancies between what was announced in the states and what was announced in the national coalition center and if there are no discrepancies then um, i think uh, it may not really um, challenge the validity of the results. It depends on that he is a lawyer and he knows uh, the legal aspect of it. Uh, so I think if there are no discrepancies, but definitely uh, initially what everybody thought based on the promises of INEC was that these results will be transmitted electronically yeah. uh, from various levels up to the National Coalition Center. And that was done up to state level. But then from the state level, then it was done manually to the National Coalition Center. And I think uh, that is where Nigerians demanded an explanation. And that is where the political parties, too, even had to stage a workout. Uh, but then, um, like I mentioned earlier on, um, the results went ahead and it was announced. And um, I think, um, like uh, the uh, presidential elect said in his own acceptance speech, that uh, if there are legal issues, it is expected that uh, the political parties can go to court and challenge the legality of the process. But um, uh, even it being primary or secondary, uh, I think uh, that should come from INEC. And then if that is challenged in the court, we'll be made to understand whether it is really primary or secondary. But Nigerians, based on the promises of INEC, expected that these results will be transmitted to the local government and from the local government to the states and then from the states to the National Coalition Center electronically. And that simply did not happen. All right. So, uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent, let me come back to you. And being a lawyer, I'd like to ask you, what should be done to INEC? Because INEC obviously has some questions to answer and explanations to give. First, a major reason why a large turnout was witnessed on Saturday was because of INEC's promise. I remember my children would say to me, Mommy, a promise is a debt. Mm -hmm. INEC told Nigerians that the elections would be electronically uh, transmitted. You know, transmitted, the result. And we know that result is the name of the game. Whether you call it primary function or secondary function, Nigerians were assured that whatever they cast at the polling units will be transmitted through the beavers to the IRF. And that gave Nigerians the hope that, okay, this time around, the courts will not decide. This time around, it's not going to be a case of who rigs the most winning. It's going to be our votes counting. Now, the inability or refusal of INEC officials to upload through the beavers broke the hearts of Nigerians, and that changed the narrative. What should Nigerians be doing with INEC at this point in time? First of all, INEC hasn't, I haven't seen, except I missed the broadcast, INEC has given any form of apology to us as to the reasons why their promise was not kept. So first of all, from the legal angle, what should Nigerians and what can Nigerians do to INEC? Well, first of all, I can't speak for INEC. You know, I can only speak for my party. No, I want you to speak as speak. a lawyer this time. Speak for Nigeria. Yeah, speak for Nigerians as a lawyer. Yeah, what I what is what I'll say is that I'm going to give kudos to INEC for what I think is a major logistic undertaking. And people sometimes miss the point. There are one seventy six thousand eight hundred only units in Nigeria. And the, the, what I never said by the regulations is that, like I said, the beavers had a scanner, which is first of all used for scanning facial recognition where fingerprints fail. That's the primary function of the scanner. But that scanner can also be used to scan the results direct to the INEX server. That's my understanding. And um, after that, we talk about IREN. So, what I say is this. But there's all, what is important is that there's a process for coalition. Coalition happens at the world, local government, and state. Coalition is actually a process of verifying that what was done at the unit is in compliance with the law. And it's an important process. And there's a reason why it is there. And, and so INEC understand that every time I hear the INEC chairman speak, he keeps saying there's a process. As we speak, 
have gone to fire rev i think they have uploaded about 130,000 results from polling units in four days from every We are just having a bit of audio on a mass yeah. scale. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you compare it to to results in the United States, results in the United States were still coming on for five days, and we're here. Uh, Vincent, said, Vincent, said, Vincent oh, can I food, can I rephrase this? Excuse me, Vincent. Can I can I rephrase you this? Make a point, it takes two days. So I think we should be fair and understand. Uh, Vincent, a just just speaking. a moment, just a moment, Vincent. I understand what you're saying and how you're saying it. The question is, Nigerians, uh, because they say justice should not only be done, but should be perceived as being done. So Nigerians are perceiving that they've been ch shortchanged by the actions of INEC. Now, if you were to advise, that's what Maureen was asking you, if you were to advise the Nigerian populace on the steps to take to get the answers they need to get from INEC, what should they do? We're not saying what INEC has done right or wrong, but the way Nigerians are perceiving it, it may not be the way INEC is seeing it. So they owe us an explanation. How do we go about it to get that explanation? What I'll say is this. Every Nigerian who voted, right, every Nigerian who voted also had the opportunity to see the results from the polling units. You probably, if you did, you would see the results of the polling unit. You could also take a picture of it. If you go to IREV, and you just go with an open platform, you can actually go to view the result of your unit, whether it's the same. Now, if there is any alteration, there must be a reason. And I don't think that that, that is the case in a lot of situations. People are just saying. But that, that has been proven to be the case. Yeah. And they didn't see their results. Vincent. So that's not Vincent. Enough. Vincent. That's not enough. Just that you went the day after you didn't see it. Maybe today. Yeah. So go and check first of all and verify whether the results in the polling in your polling unit is the same as the one that was signed after conclusion of voting. Yeah, Vincent. That is when you start to make the argument. Yeah, Vincent. So, like I said, Vincent. Maybe there is no argument. They should accept the results. That's my view. Yeah, Vincent, um, speaking strictly as a Nigerian, speaking strictly as a journalist without bias, we are working with facts. We are working with the things we are seeing. And uh, we've seen videos, uh, we've seen pictures, we've seen, um, we, we've seen evidence that, well, this is not a court, but we're working with some of the things we've seen, where we've seen TIPEX being used to cancel results at polling units. We've seen all of that. We've seen people presenting uh, their results, saying it's different from what they are seeing uploaded. And that is why it was so crucial that these results were uploaded at the polling unit to avoid a situation. Because what Nigerians want, it's not about APC, LP, PDP, whatever party. It's about the system working. It's about the system working. We want a system that we can trust. That if you lose, you lost squarely. You lost fairly. If you win, you won fairly and squarely. So that is what this is about. It's about a system that works. So that even the next, because people are saying that the major reason, we saw pictures and mm -hmm. videos yeah. where even a polling unit very close to mine, you could see the reluctance on the part of the staff to upload. The person behind her, behind him, was saying, you were putting the wrong code, so it's not going to work. And at that point, people got agitated and almost beat him up. So we're talking about things we saw. And that's why I said, INEC owes Nigerians an explanation, because we were hopeful of a system that we could trust. I think INEC will give an explanation. Like I said, um, I've seen um, the response of the INEC chairman to a lot of the arguments even at the national coalition center so i'm sure that has the capacity to give that explanation okay. and like i said the law actually makes provision for him to review where anybody calls for a review any of any results declared the law gives that opportunity for within seven days and for these circumstances i don't really want to go into that because i can't speak for INEC. but i think they are they, they understand their processes and they keep they kept emphasizing that there is a process there is a process that needs to be done, even with dealing with the results that have been uploaded. 
So I think, I think, I mean, prior to upload, you know, so I think that they probably have their own process, which I cannot speak about, but I'm sure that they have an explanation to give when they are called to give that explanation. Okay. But again, okay. uh, thank let's you. not try to change the entire process because I'm sure that whatever complaints, whatever, what's the margin, what you will see, and the only thing, the issue of the upload or real-time upload is just one factor. There were other things that happened in the election that could have influenced the, the, the whole operation, how the logistics happened, got there on time, the network, you know, so the, the intimidation, pressure. Don't forget that I, I, see, I saw many of these um, agents, these polling agents, they are youth couples, young people, serving their country under extreme pressure. So, I mean, people need, really need to be considerate. And like I said, we are building a process. Democracy is not, is not a bus stop, it's a journey. And we are heading somewhere. I think we have to understand that we must take the wins, the step-by-step -step wins, and build upon them future. This yeah. is a new technology Thank you. that- Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. Into an electoral process. Thank you, Vincent. And to expect that you get it right 100%. At the first bite, I think it's the bit of ice mix. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know. Maybe Aine can never go wrong with you. But um, we were expecting. Yeah, they, we, we, we were not expecting you. We were not expecting you to talk for INEC. We were expecting you to talk for the common man, just as a lawyer. No, but let me go to Kabiru. I have to be careful. Let, oh, yeah, I know. I know that too. Let Let me go to Kabiru now. Um, we don't have much time, but um, I'd just like you to, as much as possible, as quickly as possible, respond to this, Kabiru. Um, we, had an, we had an electoral act, which everybody thought was the game changer. That was the one that also brought the beavers. And that was the one that gave some other guidelines for someone to be qualified to contest an election. And then we have the, the uh, judiciary. Now, all of them, this uh, coming together because of what I'm going to give as an analogy. We go up not to Yobe State, where the uh, sitting uh, speaker, of, um, president of the Senate, came from where, wherever he came from and became the candidate, the senatorial candidate for that uh, senatorial district. We also have from Akwaibom State, where the governor, former governor, Gottswil Akwabio, came from nowhere, that's what I will say, to become the candidate for that senatorial district, in spite of the provisions of this electoral act in spite of what we hope the beavers will give us in spite of what we felt the judiciary uh, the kind of role they will play to make sure this electoral act is followed to the letter now do you still believe that the electoral act has performed anything anything significant in this election that has just been concluded well yes i think um, i will agree with vincent that uh, it is a process and um, we have made a headway. Uh, the problem you have uh, cited, or the examples you have cited of the Senate President, uh, Godswill, Akpadio, and others, I, I think you can ascribe it to the judiciary. But even that, you can see, like that of the Senate President, it was just a majority judgment. There was still the minority judgment there. You can read it and see. So each one of the two sides have presented the reasons why they have taken the decisions they have taken. So I think there is not much of a problem with the Electoral Act, except if you are trying to say that uh, we should not accept the judiciary, uh, as the Supreme Court as a final, having the final say in determining who flies a ticket. Uh, and I think uh, that will be taking us back. So the Electoral Act has, has done well, and the Beavers has really, we have tried it. Uh, what I had expected with the Beavers was we could have made a, a lot of trials so that uh, INEC has offered excuses as to why real time and uh, they could not be uploaded, the results could not be uploaded to the, uh, the national at the national level. Uh, but I, I had expected us to make a trial and to see, uh, like uh, Vincent has said, 100 and over 170,000 polling units. We could have made a trial, and if there were challenges, all those things would have been overcome before we come to the final process. Uh, so, but uh, like uh, Maureen has slightly shared, said, um, we expect, uh, apart from the explanations and apology where there is a failure, mm -hmm. uh, but then the Electoral Act has, has done uh, well, 
and the beavers have added to the, a little credibility to the electoral process. And we can now take a look back and see areas that need to be improved, then we can improve on that. Um, it is really a process. And uh, But uh, I think we went into this election with a lot of hope. And uh, in some cases, these hopes were dashed. The logistics issues alone are enough to, to have, um, I mean, surprise Nigerians, despite the, the chest beating and, of course, the assurances of ANIC. Uh, still, we have seen places where by 12 p.m. there were no electoral materials. And uh, then in a lot of places, elections have to hold on Sunday against the normal processes. So, yes, there, is, there should be some explanations. There should be some apologies. But I believe we have made some progress. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, it's, we're sorry we don't have much time, but um, uh, we'd just like to thank you and hope that this conversation, if we have uh, anything else to ask, we can also contact you and make sure we, are, we unravel all the things that need unraveling and explanations where we need the explanations. Thank you, that, gentlemen, that for coming. Purpose. Thank you very much. Uh, Vincent you. and Kabiru, thank you for coming on the thank show. Thank you very much. Congratulations again to Nigeria. Yeah, th congratulations, <laughs> congratulations to you. Congratulations to you, Vincent, ACN <laughs> and Vincent, the APC family. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a, a break for the news and we'll return on the other side to conclude the program. Stay with us.